What's up guys, I'm here trying to mount the servo onto this HCSR04 bracket. So this is the, the 3D printed, the push on bracket for the ultrasonic sensor. And then I've gone ahead and taken my nine gram servo and the attachment. Let me pull it up right here. I don't know if you can see this. Um, I've just sort of snipped the ends off, so the second dot. And what I'm gonna do here is just mount it like so onto the bottom. Uh, so that way you can pivot and I'm just gonna hot glue it on there. So I got my hot glue gun over here. It's uh, been heating up for a minute or two. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so it's been roughly a minute or two. I've let the hot glue sort of cure and the results are better than I actually expected. Um, it's really, really strong, I guess. Um, I don't know, this hot glue that I got for, adheres really well to this ABS plastic. But now that it's mounted, I don't know if you can see that, um, we're gonna go ahead and test fit it onto this servo to see if it, if it fits. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and wrangle this cable real quick and sort of just match it flush straight up. And then check to see if it rotates. So it looks pretty good. We got like full 180 degrees what we want. Sweet. And then I'm gonna go ahead and snap in the uh, ultrasonic sensor so I can give you a better look at this. So this mouse is really sort of intuitive. Uh, you just sort of line it up and push straight down on both sides and it snaps in place. So now you can see our sensor um, unit all together. So essentially how it's gonna function is this sits in front of the robot, um, detects when an object gets close and it stops and then it will swing to the right, measure the distance, swing to the left, measure the distance, and then compare the values and then based on that it'll either turn left or right or turn around so yeah that's pretty much it that's how you set up the ultrasonic sensor with the servo and the mounting and the gluing stuff so yeah awesome thought I'd run through the obstacle avoidance system that I have set up um, right now I have a little test and I'm just gonna go through how it works so let's go ahead and start the script. So when you run that, um, it puts the Raspberry Pi in sort of like this input state, so it's waiting on user input. So if I hit W, it's gonna kick off um, this new thread, and then this thread is just gonna go through the process. So now that we have the thread running, it's essentially um, getting a reading from the ultrasonic um, sensor every, it's like less than a second. So I've set the threshold to 20 centimeters. So anything greater than 20 centimeters, it will just keep the robot going forward. So as you can see, there's no, or the obstacle in front of the sensor is roughly 32 centimeters away. And then as that moves closer, so once it reaches 20, that signals um, this routine to stop the robot, check the distance on the right and the left, and then compare them. 
and it, there's a conditional with three checks. So if the obstacle, for example, if we move the obstacle to the right, the distance on the left would be greater, so then the robot would move to the left. Whereas if the obstacle were on the left side of the robot, the distance would be greater on the right side and the robot would move right. Now, if, if it's dead flush and both rings are the same, which doesn't occur a lot because there's always a little variance, that will just uh, signal the robot to turn 180 degrees. So yeah, that's essentially how this, I believe it's called sonar. Well, it's not underwater, so I believe the correct term is sonar. Using ultrasonic waves to determine the distance. But yeah, that's pretty much it. So now that we have the obstacle avoidance system set up, we can go ahead and implement the, the rest of the robot and put it together. Sweet. Picking up from where we left off, I've just gone ahead and sort of put some cable ties to make the wiring a little bit neater um, on all sets of the cables attached to the motor. We're going to go ahead and sort of add double-sided tape to the bottom of the battery pack here and sort of mount it on this middle tier. I've already attached the standoff so you can see there's three. So two in the back, one up front. Um, so let's go ahead and tape that that up. I have a, some scotch, outdoor scotch tape, um, heavy duty um, tape. So it's, it's really strong stuff. You can get this at any hardware store. So it holds on pretty well and it's um, it's you're still able to remove things if you have to but <laughs> you know just be careful it has a really good grip so I'm gonna move this here So I'm just going to put two pieces, like one on this top area, and cut it out, try and keep it as sort of square as possible. I have about, what was that, what was it, two and a half, three inches. Let me get exact here with my ruler. Yeah, right on the money. Two and a half inches. I'm gonna cut out another two and a half. All right, looks pretty good. Yeah. So that's good. Now our power source is all set up. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and move this for the time being. And essentially, we're gonna use, if you look at the bottom of this, there's a USB output, outputs five volts and a 12 volt DC jack. So I'm going to take this and run this straight to the Pi. Uh, I don't know if I can put a fuse or something to limit the current so that way we can make sure it doesn't damage the Pi, but whatever, we can add that later. Um, what, I'm at, what I am going to do is run this to a buck converter and then step the voltage down to 6 volts because apparently uh, these are rated for like 3 volts, I think, but uh, you're not going to get enough power, and I, I know for a fact, like running it on the carpet, you're going to run into issues. So, that buck converter allows us 
or gives us more control on the voltage. Um, so I'll probably fine tune that later. Um, so yeah, let's move this to the side. I already got my soldering iron going and then I've mocked up this buck converter right here. So we got the, this is the DC jack in. Uh, it's probably out of frame. Ah, man. But yeah, it's like right here. And then the other one is just the plain wire because it's going to hook up to this eventually so this end will feed into it. We'll feed into here, um, right there. So yeah, let's go ahead and start soldering this in. So now that we have it all soldered up, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and test it out. So I'm gonna go grab my multimeter real quick. This is a Harbor Freight digital multimeter. Um, it's super cheap, I don't know. I can't really comment on the accuracy. I haven't really tried anything else. But I don't know, it seems to work pretty well. So where's my battery pack? Oh, here it is. And I'm gonna plug this in here, turn it on. So now it's hot. And let's go ahead and get a reading real quick. So, reversing 10 and a half volts. So I think this is just spitting out maximum, maximum power. So I'm gonna try and step it down some and adjust this. Adjust that setting, that pot, I believe it's called. Let me get my handy screwdriver real quick. Sweet, so now we have it reading at 10.6. I'm gonna try to adjust this little screw here. Oh, there we go. I need five volts, boom. Perfect. I need to add some liquid electrical tape to the bottom of this. So just like on the four corners here real, real quick. Sweet. All right, that should be good. Oh, really? No. How can we in between there? That won't slide. All right, so we're gonna wait for that to dry. I'll be back. I have added this sliver of uh, the mounting tape and I'm going to put it in front of this battery right here in this sort of empty vacant. Kinda of works out pretty nice. I don't know if you can see that. I've made a number of modifications to the robot since the last time I was on here. So I'm gonna go over a few things. Um, mainly I've mounted all the electronics on the top before the motor driver was connected to the acrylic base with double-sided tape, but I've gone ahead and removed that. Since we've insulated the bottom, I've just gone ahead and zip-tied the back ends here. Um, I've done something similar with the Raspberry Pi. I've zip tied these um, two mounting holes on the Pi and I've just sort of daisy chained two zip ties. And then on the bottom, I don't know if you can see, I just put some uh, electrical tape down here so that way these little solder points don't short out. Um, I've actually changed up the the breadboard, because before we had a half size, which was like way too big. 
so I got one of the mini micros and uh, rewired the HCSR404 sensor. This will be reflected in the schematic. And then I've also zip tied this um, servo controller and I've gone ahead and I've trimmed the, the wire that feeds power to this servo controller. So now that everything looks you know, sort of neat and tidy, I've zip tied these, this little wire glob up top here. Um, the last thing we need to do um, to physically put the robot together is figure out how to mount the sensor array out in front. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to build out like a little platform over here, and it's just going to stick stick out sort of upside down like so. Um, so that's what we'll start doing, and then we can get this thing rolling. <laughs> 